called People on the Other Side. I don't disturb the people on the other side. I hope that I don't perturb the people on the other side. I hope that they don't call the police on me. I hope that they don't put no curse on me. The people on the other side. What's going on? 
on the other side of you. Okay, so every time I sing that song, and hopefully every time I sing any song, things happen. Images come to mind, and I, I have to trust them. I go with them, so it creates pictures. I saw a lot of pictures, and with that engagement, the audience probably saw pictures also. There's a, a visual effect. That's what engages an audience. When the performer is engaged, the audience watches the movie. And that gets the audience to be active participants of what is going on in the room. They're active part actively participating. They're creating their own reference points. So when I just sang that last part, What's going on? What's going on on the other side? That was one of the lyrics in the end. Hey, how's it going? What's going on? That is such a, I realized at that point, oh, that's a good reason why I sang this song because it gives me a way into this lecture. That's the kind of unraveling that I'm looking for that keeps things alive. So uh, it's been such a need for me to find out what's going on. To, and to have a space, to have this wonderful space that humanity has created where there are very few rules. Different than out there, we can call this a black box, a church, whatever, but the, the initial form of theater, things can happen here that can't happen outside. So the goal is to create a safe place to allow things to happen, to allow things to come up and present themselves. A safe place for doing unsafe things. A couple words came into mind this morning. Uh, the research of vulnerability and courage, those two words uh, stimulated me today as I, uh, on my way here. Uh, um, what my work is, is definitely in the, in the realm of research. So I begin workshops by saying, telling everyone, nothing that you do in here has to be any good. Nothing has to be any good. That's very important because the need to be good is the primary block to creativity. I just recently worked with the circus students uh, at Doc, at the, or they don't call it Doc anymore, Uni Arts, who are, have for many years, there's, they have a high skill level, and their intention is to perfect things. That's what the, my workshop is uh, completely diametrically not opposed because they have to do that for their skill, but it's another way in to their work where it's not a, at all about perfection. It's about being present, uh, even allowing all the unknowns to give the element of life on stage. Also, the intention of the workshop and a, a new inroad for them is to give uh, participants a trust in their intuition, into their ideas, into their artistic uh, souls. And, and I don't use that word lightly. It's about hitting up against soul. What needs to be said, not, not what should be said, but to creating a space to allow the stuff that needs to be said. And if it needs to be said for an individual, it probably needs to be so said for the world. Now, this idea of the other side, things, how things are stripped bare, I use, I use um, 
a primary element of the work is something I call uh, working with the third thing. And that is, starts right in the beginning of each workshop and it's, it's shown in a very uh, specific physical way where two people stand very close to each other. Uh, they feel heat resonating from their neck. They don't touch each other. And they do a research of how to uh, move in the room. They do an exploration. Uh, it's constant motion and it's a constant uh, negotiation, a constant dialogue with this third thing that neither of them can control. Often there's a question of who's leading and we get to the point where often both people think the other one is leaving, leading. You, the idea is that neither leads, that there's a constant reaction and interaction so that people are moving like this, they're coming down all the way to the floor which gives another de degree of difficulty uh, where the negotiator has to be very acute. So this is a listening exercise, a constant listening to what's going on moment for moment so they can negotiate, never leaving this goal. So the third thing, this point of view, is the baby. That's the thing to keep in touch with. And that is the driving force in the entire workshop. This, this, and that's the engagement I was speaking about before. So to maintain that the entire time is the thing, not. It is, but here's, I dare say, the beautiful room for mistakes and accidents. Because what the engagement, it, it's not to be perfect. It's not to do it well. It's to maintain engagement. So if somehow I'm carrying the baby and I trip and it flies out of my hand, my intention is to catch it before it reaches the ground. So the intention and the, I'm still engaged when I, when it goes away. So if it fades off, if, if I'm losing the intention, instead of stepping out and giving up, you have the engagement of getting it back. And that's still engagement. It's still engagement. So there's room for beautiful error, a crack. Like Leonard Cohen said, uh, there's a crack in everything. It lets the light come in. Now, the workshop starts off I introduced that element of the third thing. Uh, even before that, I asked people to do a piece of writing, a very spontaneous piece of writing. Doesn't have to be any good, doesn't have to be clever or anything. They're not going to be responsible for it, that someone else is gonna deal with whatever they write. A little rhyming thing. I, I, I give it no, it's not important. Uh, this, is, this is something you're gonna, so, so that's a process they go to. They have to sit down. What should I write? Between the thought and the expression of the thought. That's also the third thing. What's between this negotiation? I have an idea. How does it get to the page? Is it a struggle? Is it, is it interrupted? It doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's a struggle or an interrupt, but we're looking for a disen disengagement from the critic. Uh, so this piece of writing goes to someone else and we, we engage in a process. I'm not going to give everything away in the workshop because hopefully you're going to take it. Uh, the, the, um, but eventually people uh, take this text and imbue their imaginations on it in a very simple way. 
No need to be good, no need to be clever. No, it's just the, the idea is to whatever comes up in your imagination, put that down. And then from that we build into characters, story, it becomes very complex actually, and goes very deeply into a story that comes out, comes from a random piece of writing that someone else made. Sensational material comes out of that. Sensational. Uh, we observe uh, amazing theater. We go in great depth into the character. Sometimes people respond, I don't know if this is, uh, what I'm coming up with is too much like me. You can run, but you can't hide. Everything is coming from you. It's okay. It's, let's, let's play this game where it's not you. Liberate yourself from you. Let this character have its own life. There's a process of interviewing these characters where uh, the person who created the character asks questions of the character and let, allow them to respond. Relinquish control. That is a lot what's going on in the space. Relinquishing control. Allowing things to happen. If you don't need to be good, if you don't, it, it, and when that happens, there starts to be a, a snowball effect where people see in the other's work that it's working. And they see uh, the, the imaginations and fantasies evolving uh, in, into this story. One of the things that we adhere to this, this simple piece of writing is randomly is like something happened in this text of, of very high stakes. Something of high stakes happened uh, to someone, and then they wrote these texts. That's the, where they've been. That's their point of departure in in uh, developing the story. Because all stories, any story that you see, high stakes is involved. Otherwise, no one, you know, Romeo and Juliet, uh, I love you, I love you, but our, we come from different families, let's kill ourselves. High stakes. Uh, or Medea, you're gonna go away with her, I'm gonna kill our twin children. Yeah, uh, high stakes, these are high stakes. Astrid Lindgren uh, with, with Bruno Leonhardt, my God. <laughs> That's a kid story. They don't make kid stories. They don't dare make kid stories like that anymore for some reason, for not good reason. Everything gets rounded off. Politically correct. There are ex exercises that break through that in a very direct way. Because this theme of the other side is coming up so strongly in today's world. Everything is so polarized that uh, everyone has their own sources of information. There's very little communication with the other. The characters who, that evolve in these, uh, have, there's a protagonist and an antagonist. Both characters have to be defended. Fully defended, no matter what they are. In your wildest imagination, you cannot be creating a complex story, which you want, you want a complex story, without defending the uh, antagonist. If you, if you, if that's already the bad guy, it's not gonna make me, the audience member, work hard enough. I wanna see, see that, oh, that's got a good point, to, got a good point there. Very, it, it, we, we want to give problems to the audience, not solutions. I, I'm sick of going to theater, politically correct theater, that says, this is how we should live. 
the artist standing up says, I think we should live like this. Well, why? Why? What, what, preach, why preach to the converted? Make it complicated for yourself as the creator. Make it a research for yourself. Uh, not know from the beginning uh, what your, a point you're going to make. Discover what's going to be made. So that, that's the, that's kind of the arc of the workshop. And it's not an intellectual process. We go through the intellect into really getting into emotion. I do something called passion exercise, where you really, the performer really imagines the characters they create and goes into the imagine the depth of their existential crisis. The workshops are fun, actually. They're a lot of fun. They're a blast. Uh, but they can be very tough fun, too. But still fun. Fun. The idea of play. The idea of what the play, when if you see a child in a sandbox, they're going from here, and this turns, and then it turns to this, and worlds are unraveling. Like that song I just sang, worlds unravel. They present themselves. And with this unraveling, you get to some real stuff. The stories that come out are uh, useful to everyone in the room. That happens. Uh, material is generated that can be worked on, continued. Actual stuff is made in the workshop. So you can, you can continue with it. Plays have been made, fills have been made, uh, uh, Lots of stuff has, has uh, screenplays have been written. Um, lots of stuff has come out of the workshop. But the, the main intention is to give people a trust in, the, in that they can. And they see that with, through their own work and they see it um, through everyone else in the room. I mean, it can be very uh, uh, difficult to to, to, or maybe even try to say everyone is a genius. But you see everyone's brilliance come out in the workshop. This happens constantly. And uh, the degree of vulnerability and courage that I, I talk about that, that snowballs, well, it creates a very... I dare use the word loving environment. Emotional, loving, vulnerable, and courageous. I don't think I have any more at this. I, I, I can leave it at that. Uh, should we take questions? Do you, what, would you like to ask questions? There's a, a, any questions at all? Any questions? I'm, yes. cu I'm curious to, bo to know a little bit more about you and your background. Yes. Um, yes, I, I fell into this uh, intuitively, I guess you could say. Uh, I was traveling. I, I, I left the States, uh, left the chaos of the States. I come from a, a family of doctors. Uh, I, I left uh, and I was kind of, uh, I guess one could say the black sheep. Uh, they, I don't think they considered, but I was definitely different than the others. I traveled. I traveled. I, uh, I ended up in Norway working for a farmer. I wanted to work with my hands, with my body. I, I was physically inclined. And uh, it was time to leave. Potatoes were picked. Uh, I went to get paid. And I was going to hitchhike to India, but the farmer didn't have any money. He, and he, so 
so he gave me a, uh, an electric razor, battery up a party that he'd won in bingo the night before. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was kind of broke. I hitchhiked uh, on my way to India. I ended up in Ostersund, where I stayed for the next five years. And, uh, and I was directed to a young, from a young man who was to a teeny village, uh, uh, 10 kilometers into a dirt road in a uh, population 50, uh, where an international uh, uh, theater company had taken over the schoolhouse. Uh, Institute of Seinkunst, directed by Ingmar Lind. Uh, and there were some Americans there, so that's why I went there, because I wanted to see my uh, American uh, compatriots. So uh, I liked it there, it was beautiful, I was drawn to beautiful places, to nature, and I didn't have any money, so I asked the Ingemar Lind, uh, the director, if I could work, if there was any work. Where did you come from? Well, how did you find this? Uh, I was just hitchhiking. India. And he thought I meant, can I work with you in the theater? And I meant, uh, could I clean your bathrooms in, for in exchange for some money? Uh, but next thing I know, I was in a... <laughs> he didn't expect this kind of smile about my background. Uh, next thing I know, I was in a black room with, with uh, five teachers from all over Europe. Grotowski, this was a Grotowski-driven Odin Theater was the sister company. Uh, there were some wonderful artists who came out of this school. But I started improvising with the Grotowski actor. And uh, I'd never improvised, I'd never done anything theatrical before. And he, 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 um, he, he took his hand and he went like this. And he connected with me, like that. And that is what... I've been talking about this whole time. This connection, this connection, that connection. So he did that. Wow, this guy really wants to connect with me. Let's do this. I'll play this game. So they said, okay, you can work with us. And I stayed in that village for four years. Uh, but that was the spark that changed my life. And I am staying true to it. And I have a big desire to share the, uh, I'll use the word, rapture of creativity. Penetrating this world full of things and responsibilities and strategies and going into this place where shit happens losing track of time, going into another dimension and allowing stuff to present itself, to deal with it, to work out things. I see it as, I see it even politically as a way to uh, have people uh, Re release and involve themselves, like I said, with the other. This day, these days, the self has been, the selfie, the self, everything's about self. There's such a rich experience with the other. Whether it's relationship with your own creativity or other people or people who you're, you would never... Uh, uh, deal with. I think it's a. I, 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 I'm taking the work in working with diversity, I'm working with businesses, I want to work with schools, I've had tremendous uh, satisfaction uh, uh, working with gymnasium students or teachers have said after two hours I've worked with this kid for four years. This is the first time I saw them. Um, I, there's a, so I don't only apply this work to artists. It works great for artists, 
often it rekindles, they, they're reminded of why they do this work. That's often a reaction. Um, but uh, I, I want to expand it. I want to work with doctors, I'd like to work with lawyers, priests, uh, all those kind of performers. And non-performers, students, very important to give them, put them in touch with their creativity. That's where all learning comes from. So I'm passionate about it, if that answers your question. Yeah. <laughs>